the Quarry Hall Memorial Expedition first came about when I talked to James about getting together uh, to honor Corey, who passed away in Peru in a climbing accident. And we kind of came up with the plan together to go to Pakistan. Uh, that's mainly what James was was pushing for. Um, and and I supported that, and he came up with the objective to go to Tanger Tower. Um, the reason why we chose Pakistan was that was a place Corey really wanted to go. Um, and we had talked about going there the uh, year before as a team of three. I think Pakistan's a really fascinating country to go to. Um, it's culturally pretty different, uh, pretty different to the rest of Asia and Asian countries that I've been to before. Um, so that was a really interesting aspect of the expedition. Um, and just as much of a reason to go. Um, but generally speaking, Pakistan's got incredible mountains, like so many uh, amazing mixed ice rock faces um, and, and actually good granite uh, quality, which is definitely something that I, I look for. So when Corey uh, passed away, he was on this epic adventure um, going all the way from Alaska to Patagonia by motorbike and hitting up all the sort of climbing areas on the way and doing first ascents and stuff like that. And so to, to really to truly honour Corey, we decided that we would try and, and travel by motorbike and we bought Royal Enfields, even though that we didn't really know how to drive motorbikes. <laughs> so we learned in the, in the deep end, as it were, in the, in the chaos of traffic in, in, in the midday heat of uh, Delhi with, you know, 300 kilogram motorbikes and like 100 kgs of kit on the back. Okay, so last night we arrived pretty late after dark into the Kane village. Or Kani village, village, as we learn, as we now learn, it's actually pronounced, um, which is good because uh, there's another village right next to it called Kandi. It's very confusing. The map had them the wrong way around. Anyway, we've got porters, we've got three chickens, and we're setting off. Pakistan, as a country, was I, I wasn't sure what to expect when I went. I wasn't sure how warm the people would be or what what would come of it for me. Hello. The people were just so friendly and so nice. And our good friend Everywhere. Ismail. Ismail? Yeah. Ismail? Yeah. yeah. He has uh, allowed us to stay for the night at his house and given us food <laughs> yeah. and he's been very nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are welcome. Yeah. <laughs> you are our guest, you know? <laughs> yeah. It is a really awesome experience for me experience, uh, with the Muslim culture and not really having any exposure to it before and really embracing that and, and enjoying the people there for sure. And then actually getting to Tangra itself um, involves basically just a long day walking from the very last village uh, with porters uh, to get to establish a base camp. All right, here we go. <coughs> Continuing. Uh, check out this trail and these, where we're going. The Kane Creek, basically that runs out of the Kane Valley, flows into the Huche River Valley. And the Huche River Valley at the head is Mashabram, which is one of the big Karakoram mountains. Up into there. Sick. Pretty cool trail, eh? It's been built by hand <laughs> over years. Kind of wild. It's also kind of the gateway to K2, Broad Peak, and some of these other big 8,000 meter peaks. Tanger Tower being unclimbed uh, was, was the draw both for, for James and I because it's the exploration of the unknown and, and moving and traveling in terrain that you don't really know what's coming. You can look ahead and anticipate, but you never quite know. Part of that draw of exploration is also what motivated Corey to climb in that style as well. Like he 
he loved to go exploring and check things out. It didn't matter how hard it was or or where it was. It's just like if he was in the mountains and he was exploring something new, that's like what inspired him the most. So we wanted that similar style of going somewhere with with those objectives around us that hadn't really been checked out too much. When we arrived in base camp, the weather was really nice. So straight away the next day, we went on a recce mission uh, up the valley and we were like kids in a candy store, just looking around at all these awesome potential objectives and getting really excited. Uh, so we came back to base camp, uh, got all packed up and ready. Um, and then I got seriously ill. Uh, I got Jardia. Uh, and I spent the next nine days vomiting uh, with, with, with DMV. Um, at the same time, it started snowing really heavily. We went with Big Wall Kit oh, in to try and uh, climb Tangra Tower, but the weather just kept on snowing on us like it is now. And yeah, it's not really going to be possible to climb in those conditions. So we went back down to base camp, got our alpine kit, uh, and now we walked back up into the glacial cirque, and we're going to try and climb one of the twins, which is behind me in this cloud here. Um, if the weather will allow it. Pakistani weather gods have been really mean to us. I don't think they want us to climb anything. Twin Peak 2 is another five and a, five and a half thousand meter peak. Uh, it's on the other side of the valley from, from Tangra Tower. So what we did was we went we hiked up to the base of the thousand meter wall, like face, and then we started climbing. Uh, um, we climbed up some safe seracs, like glacier, steep glacier, without any real overhead hazard uh, for three pitches. In this one, I want you to pretend you're climbing a mountain. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, just like that. And then we got up onto what we thought would be more tricky terrain, which it was slow going because we were breaking trail over snow covered rock on just kind of insecure, weird climbing. The storm has just cleared, it stopped snowing and getting a bit of a view. But it looks like we're gonna have to rappel down through the night now, which is gonna be a bit shit. But, yeah, well, pretty gutted. This is so close to the summit. Avalanche! That's exciting. Oh, I've got that on camera. That's what I've been dealing with for a lot of today. Lots of spin drift avalanches. There we go. Down we go. We got up to, I don't know, maybe 150 or 200 meters from the summit. We didn't really know <laughs> how close we were. We're just kind of guessing. It's the, it's the things you gotta do to get to, to climb the stuff, you know? And you kind of just work through it, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Corey was, and still is, the most adventurous person I think I've ever met. His outlook on life um, she was, steep. was just to was go and give things a go. He had this phrase like, you can do whatever you want to do, you just got to start doing it. And there's the Karakoram. In Pakistan! First descent in India, dude! Woo! <laughs> we got back down to base camp pretty tired, obviously. Um, but then the weather that next day 
suddenly turned good. And we're like, right, well, we should probably use the good weather whilst it's here. So we had one day in base camp uh, before going to attempt Tangra. So yeah, so we set off the next day, really, um, after not enough rest, really, but we, did, we wanted to use the weather window um, and uh, approach the base of the wall and moved all our kit up onto the wall. There's Max at the base of the wall. And this is what we're tackling. I'm psyched. So our style warranted uh, a single push Alpine capsule style. Uh, um, so what that encompasses is a portal edge uh, and, and taking all your gear with you in a single push, but camping on that and sleeping on that portal edge as you travel. I've not really done a lot of big wall climbing, like a little bit in Yosemite, like climbing the nose and stuff like that. Max had done none. And that was, you know, that was obviously a bit evident, really, because we'd get, you know, getting our systems dialed. I'm going to need your help, I can't. Yeah, I'm coming. Climbing for Corey was a way of expressing his love for adventure. Corey and I and James and another Italian friend named Luca went and decided to go climb Cerro Torre. Sharing that experience was, was something that brought us closer together and helped build our relationship with his, his stoke and, and confidence in me and in James, like we wouldn't have gone together. Made me a better climber and, and, and just like increased my respect and friendship for him. You know? We've basically almost run out of gas and therefore water and so we're going to make a single push for it today to try and make the summit. Here we go, Alpine style, last day, we'll see what we got. You are? Just talking to myself here. We were camped underneath this uh, massive opera. Um, and did not appreciate how hard it, it really was. So good. day five, thinking we've got to make a, a break going fast and light for the summit, it took me, I think, about three hours to go 20 metres. And it's like hideous, upwith climbing, really horrible, like bigger, it couldn't really protect it very well because it's bigger than the biggest cam we had. And it got to like one o'clock or something and looked at my watch and it's just like, we're never going to be able to summit. and we're we got no choice, we're gonna run out of water and can't melt any snow. So it sucks, but you know, it's just illogical to carry on really. I guess at, at first I felt pretty bummed that we didn't summit, but then really it's so irrelevant. It's all part of it, isn't it? You know, the ups and, and even the downs, you know, it's what makes it a different and intense experience and that's sort of what we are pursuing I think and it's just made my desire to return higher really <laughs> you know because um, I definitely want to come back for, for Tangra Tower. Well we just uh, got down to our little advanced base camp last night, don't really know when, it was dark, uh, after five days up on, on Tangra Tower. Um, we didn't reach the summit, uh, regardless, we uh, just want to like share, spread some of Corey's uh, ashes here in Pakistan in the Kane Valley, so cheers buddy. The rock doesn't seem to have held too much snow. Yeah. Hi. How'd you feel, man? Oh, my lungs, they hate me. They hate me a lot. Put it there. Like, yeah.
Trucking. We're done. Oh. So we're with the Corey Hall, about to take his first paragliding flight. How are you feeling, Corey? Doing good. Like, he's got his aviation facial hair on. <laughs> he is. All aboard. What he doesn't know is that his paraglider is older than he is. <laughs> 